So let's do a mandala. And I wanted to actually review a couple of things first and just show you some of the stuff that I've done. For this one, I actually did a solid black uh, design and I did it on several different layers. So maybe the flowers were on a layer, the leaves were on a layer, this outer part was on a layer. And the reason for that is then you can easily change the colors of the layers just by color fill or you know, do the auto lock and fill a layer. But you can also just have fun um, coloring the whole thing if you have it on one layer. It's safe to go ahead and start with um, different layers and then you can um, duplicate and shrink it all down to one layer later to play around with it some more. So I also like to start with a template too, um, a template like uh, some sort of um, I don't I don't remember this it's been so long since I've done this one I don't remember how I used this particular template this one but just having a ring template is also nice so you can easily make that you don't need the the straight lines on it you can just make yourself a, a ring template by having uh, circles made on separate layers and then centering them with the snapping tool turned on For this one, um, I added some white as well. So I did the whole black, black design, and then I did some uh, fun, just kind of blobby colors underneath, and then I added some white details on another layer. So um, I thought it would just be fun to cycle through some of the different settings that I use. Sometimes I use rotational, sometimes I use quadrant versus radial, and, um, you can also do certain things and then duplicate and use the magnetics to rotate to get certain things in certain positions that you wouldn't normally be able to do. What else? Oh, this one is mostly with quadrants. You can see everything is in fours. This one's super duper busy. I had to squeeze in a whole bunch of things for biodiversity. So I have mushrooms and leaves and a bird and a spider and a lizard slash amphibian a dragonfly so I have insects I have ocean life I have all the different sort of um, animal kingdoms and plant kingdoms represented so let's go ahead and go to a canvas that's square um, depending on your iPad you could probably go down to eight inches by eight inches um, make sure it's at 300 dpi i'll just i'm going to go to 12 inches um, this ipad has a lot of layers and we're going to go to i'm going to make sure i use default brushes for you guys but i am going to make some changes um, so in the calligraphy section i use monoline and in the inking section we're going to use studio pen but let's make a change to this one um, and uh, i have a class on changing brushes and um, changing their settings but this one's just really basic so go ahead and duplicate that so you have the original and go into it and go to shape and you can see studio pen has this fuzzy edged circle and i want to make it a crisp clean edged one so oops let me see so go to edit i forgot to tell you to do that part in case you don't know and then import source library these are procreate shapes and just choose this one that's got a crisp edge there if it for some reason is black on white use two fingers to invert make sure the black background is there and tap done and tap done again so it's just a slight difference um it's it's only when you're zoomed in a lot that you can see that fuzzy um shape source on the regular pen and then if you if you didn't duplicate it and you just edit this native pen then you should be able to reset it later and it'll go back to the default settings all right so let's go ahead and go back over you can name that something else if you want um, let's see if you don't know how to name you go to about this brush and you tap up there and you name it whatever you want 
So let's go to calligraphy and just go to mono length for now. And I'm on black. And I'm hoping that I remember to uh, do things on multiple layers. So <laughs> go to the wrench tool and turn on drawing guide, edit drawing guide, symmetry, options. Yours will look different if you're in landscape mode. And let's start out with radial and sometimes we'll turn on rotational symmetry as well. So that defaults to having the drawing assist turned on on the layer. And every time you add a new layer, it's not going to be turned on. So what I like to do is just duplicate this layer. If you have a layer that's not turned on, you can actually access it right here really easily and toggle it on and off by tapping that. But I like to just go ahead and duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. You could even select a whole bunch and duplicate all at once. And now you have a bunch of layers with assisted already turned on. I'm just going to give you a second to get caught up. I like to go at a speed where people can follow along. Brenda made it. Hi, Brenda. I made notes. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> So I'm going to go back to the example really quick and show you. Um, I like to alternate between um, thin lines and thick lines or filled in areas and empty areas. And then when you zoom out, it just has more variety instead of just being sort of a simple outline of everything. So think about that as you're going along. And you can think about a theme. I thought it would be fun to do um, flowers and maybe some insects and leaves just for the learning of, in case you're new to this, to learn how to do it all. Um, if you're not familiar with rotational symmetry, so right now on radial, um, anything I do right here between the lines, I'm going to make my lines a little bit thicker so you guys can see them easier. So anything I do between these lines is just going to duplicate right in each section. But anything I do on the line, if I do it on the diagonal, it's just going to duplicate on the other diagonals. So that's a fun place to do um, maybe an insect right, where you can do the leaves <laughs> very symmetrically that way, so you don't have to, I mean leaves, the wings, so you don't have to draw them both on both sides. And the same thing for the vertical and horizontal lines, you're going to have the symmetry going um, on both sides of those lines. So if you try to draw an insect here, then you have to draw both wings on both sides and um, that's preferred if you don't want a super symmetrical look, then that's great. Um, I like to do certain things definitely with symmetry. And then with rotational on, so if I have this kind of shape, make like a, a wave or something, you can see that it's, it's symmetrical, it's flipped over this line right? Each line is sort of the mirror image from one side to the other, but on rotational, they would all be facing the same way like a clock. So that comes in really handy sometimes too. So you can just turn rotational on sometimes. And if you, if you alternate back and forth between rotational and not, you just need to remember when you come back to that section to do your edits that you go back to the same setting that you had for your symmetry. <clears throat> and then if you really, really want something like right here on this line, but you also want it on this line, so say you have a water drop and you really want it in that position, but you want it in all eight, on all eight lines, you can duplicate that layer, select it, 
and turn on magnetics. And then when you rotate, it'll snap. So you can snap it, I think it's 15 degree increments. So you can actually duplicate it a whole bunch of times and snap it here, here, and here. Otherwise, if you wanted a water drop here and here, you would have to draw them two times and then they might not be identical. So that's another thing to go back and forth between. And then again, you need to remember if you're editing this one right here, it's not going to be doing the same edits to this one. So you'll want to make sure you have all of your final bits drawn before you do the duplicating and rotating. Let's see what else. So um, you might want to start with a sketch first. So you have you know an easier time kind of just going through and adding your um, final lines on. But sometimes it's nice to not really put too much thought into where everything is going to go and having a sketch and just sit and listen to a podcast, watch TV, or listen to TV. <laughs> you can't watch it at the same time, I guess. And just doodle. So the Studio Pen is going to give you that ability to do thick, thin, and the monoline just monoline, of course. You can make a note on the layer. Yes, so Gabby's talking about um, maybe if you have a duplicated layer of the water drops, um, you could maybe name it something saying, you know, duplicate, or you could write something up in the corner, a note to yourself. Maybe you could write the type of symmetry you used, but you'll eventually be able to recognize the symmetry you used. So when we have a big circle, I'm going to turn drawing assist off. When you have a big circle, um, a completed mandala, mandala, I'm going to snap it into the center here. It's not letting me. Close enough. So if you have uh, your finished mandala and you have some more things going on in the corners, you can do those corner bits either with the rotational symmetry, which we have on right now, or with quadrant symmetry. And um, you may want to make a note of that. So you could easily just make notes on each layer. All right. So let's just get started. Um, I like to, you, you need to keep an eye on this shorter line, this long line. If you try to make things along it, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't make a circle. It won't be able to, this line is the shortest one. So it's going to need to stop right here on the long line, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully. You'll probably want your streamline to be fairly high. So you have smoother lines. And then I'm just going to come down in size for my brush size and start thinking about the center. So if I do a petal right here in the center, I'm not necessarily getting a very symmetrical looking petal, but then it does eight of them. Whereas if I do it here, I need to duplicate or do another one here. And I just realized that this is going to have to take a very long time on this live to get it really um, precise and nice looking. So I'm going to make bigger elements. That's really big, but that's okay. <laughs> and then how do you want your center of your flower to look? You don't have to keep the symmetry on for the whole thing. My hand is sticking. I don't know if you can hear it unstick every time. And something fun to look into also is um, Zentangles. Zentangles will help you um, give you ideas for cute little patterns to make and all sorts of things. So we'll just maybe make some fun little lines. Ooh, that was wobbly. So 
So from here on this one, I would probably leave it for now and keep going. But then I would probably come back and do some thicker areas. And you can drag and drop and fill certain areas in. But I would, I would usually think about that after I get my um, whole design going. So dragging and dropping and then tap and hold the eraser to get to the same pencil, same brush on the eraser mode. And then maybe do some negative space, things like this. Tapping right on that line is tricky. So you can turn symmetry off when you do something that's right on this, um, the symmetrical line. And then if this petal had that same look, it would probably be like that and like that. And then I'll probably come back and change some of that center as well. All right, and then let's go to a new layer. Um, if it's, uh, it's probably a good idea to start high and go low so that little ends can hide under the previous layer. But for this one, I think I'll be okay um, if I have some overlap, like the overlap is gonna be, well, you know, if you do end up coloring each layer different, you are gonna to wanna to have the center be on top and then the progressive layers after that be lower and lower and lower so that all of those little ends are hiding under and your color, if you color it a different layer, different color, then it's tucked under there and hidden. So that's, let's go ahead and do that. So just go down a layer, see if there's any questions. And I like dragonflies, so let's do a dragonfly. So insects have, this is the teacher in me, <laughs> insects have a head. Dragonfly's head is mostly eyes, and they have a thorax. Let me zoom in here. On insects, the thorax is where every single leg is connected and the wings are connected. So if you really want to make um, kind of even just a imaginary insect that doesn't exist, um, if you have the legs coming out from the thorax and the wings coming out from the thorax, that will give it a very insect look, no matter what your insect looks like. And then the long body can be all sorts of shapes. Usually there's a little bit of a spike down there. You can have segments. This is the abdomen. All insects have head, thorax, and abdomen. I'm not going to put... Uh, legs on this, um, I don't really know if, usually the um, insects all have antenna as well, but I'm not sure if they're very noticeable on a dragonfly. So let's skip that. And then how big do I want the wings? So the kind of straight out like that. And then a little bit down and then over. And then let's make that a nicer connection. <laughs> And of course, you can make this as stylized as you want. So coming out from the thorax. So that's a little bit more difficult on a butterfly, for example. Let's say you have the thorax. The thorax on a butterfly is usually pretty big. And a head, you have antenna. And then the abdomen. So the thorax needs to have the wings. So don't make the wings connect down here, okay? So big, long. Most insects usually have um, four wings too, something like that. So if you're seeing um, butterflies where your wings are kind of connected all along the side of the body, um, then and then you kind of think, wow, it just, something doesn't look quite right about that. I'm not sure about that. 
um, just make sure that you have that middle section. And then spiders are a little different. Spiders just have that big abdomen and a head. And then their legs all come out from kind of in this area. So they have do 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 do. And they have eight. So insects have six and spiders have eight. And I recently found out that ticks are also considered arachnids in the spider family. So that really grossed me out. I don't know why, because bugs don't really gross me out. But ticks do, though. All right, let me look at my notes really quick. <laughs> Make sure I'm not forgetting any tips here. All right, I think that instead of spending time on decorating, um, so what I did here where I made the thicker areas, I would be doing the same thing on the butterfly and dragonfly. So just kind of having fun, filling in some thicker and thinner areas, maybe even fill in the abdomen and head and thorax entirely, maybe making some nice spots that are black. So hopefully you guys will all end up with a um, slightly different version from each other. Um, I'm mostly wanting to show you the techniques that I use. For the dragonfly, maybe making some veins Something like that. I still think it's too outline looking. It needs more thick and thin. You could switch over to the studio pen and get some um, variation in your thickness of your lines. I also don't like how thin this bottom part of the butterfly is right now. But for now, it's good. We'll keep moving. So let's go to another layer. So this layer didn't really matter if it was above or below this layer. I ended up jumping uh, ahead but um, to just show you the, the insect stuff. But if you have another layer that's coming in right under this one, then you, do, you need to make sure it's under. You can put them in um, a better order if it makes more sense to you to have this down here with the insects on it and go right under this one for a layer that's connected to this one. So if you have something that's really connected like this, then it makes a lot of sense to have that be right under it in your layers. If you're new to me, um, I usually kind of gear my instruction towards uh, beginner um, procreate artists. So if you already know a lot of this, right, then um, you just go for it. Let's see, somebody's saying, butterflies are one of my interests. I collect vintage illustrations of them. Love to create art with them. That's awesome. So this might be something that I want to go ahead and duplicate and add to this spot too. I'm not sure it's going to fit, so I'm going to check it before I add any more details to it. So it does overlap, but I think that'll be okay. We can deal with that. So I'm gonna delete one of those and finish the other one. We'll just keep it simple here. I take forever thinking about what I wanna do with each section. So um, I keep dragging and dropping to the wrong spot. So I'm, I don't wanna waste your time I'm doing that so I'm not really being very creative with uh, what I am choosing to do with these sections just making these look similar to these for example but you can see how it's kind of fun just to doodle the nice thing about having these on separate layers is I can now erase in here without worrying about it erasing this so that's nice. So the overlapping area was right here. 
if you had those ends filled in, then one will cover the other and it'll be just fine. Without them filled in, you can see both of them. And that's something that you can choose to leave alone and let them uh, both be seen in this overlap here or on one of them erase part of it. So now you can definitely tell one is under the other. If you were to drag and drop color now into this piece right here with the erased section, it won't be contained into this little area. So you could go ahead and draw a line like this that's connecting. So now I can turn this off. Oh, it needs to be connected down here too. Oh, it can't be because all right, so it needs to be just this section right here. Okay, it's this piece, not this piece. So this section I can now drag and drop and fill. I wouldn't have been able to do that before because I had erased a big section up in here. I'll just leave it like that for now. So we have some flowery bits. Before I, oh, I'm gonna, hmm. So before I duplicated that, I should have added some little um, pistols and stamen maybe on the flower, but that would have bumped into my dragonfly. So maybe I might wanna erase my dragonfly. Unfortunately, I can't just move the dragonfly. Uh, it'll only move one. You can take the layer, oh, it's got the butterflies on it too. You can shrink it down and um, change the the size of it and it'll shrink down. It's kind of tricky. I don't even want to go into that. So you could just entirely redo the dragonfly if you wanted it to be further up on the page more. Um, and then down here on these flowers you could have some pistols and stamen sticking up out of these. But let's just go ahead and merge those two layers. Only do that if you know you're done. So you're not going to be filling in anymore, or if you are filling in, if you decide to come back and fill something in on that, go to a new layer, do your filling, do your whatever you're going to do, and then just do the same thing we did before where you duplicate and rotate to get that same look onto this one. Or maybe you want them to be different, right? And have it alternate every other one be a little bit different. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm making sense. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Oh, I feel like I have all these friends around the world. <laughs> all right. And I like to have some leaves when I have flowers. So then let's go to a new layer, definitely under so the stems can just hide underneath. I'm going to go to a thicker line and think about rotation. Do you want rotational symmetry on now? Um, I think I'm kind of leaning towards not having rotational symmetry on. And I have a big gap over here. So let's just kind of maybe do a leaf here. I want to get to some of the stuff that I do um, when I have a finished design. I did go to a new layer. I just remembered. OK, good. So do your leaf design however you want. You can also decide, do you want there to be a finished circle at the end of all of this? Um, if you do, the butterflies are already going to be in the way of that. Um, but you can go to a brand new layer, no symmetry on, and draw a circle. Let it snap. Put your finger down so it's a perfect circle. Uh, I wouldn't do fit to screen because you don't necessarily want it to be um, all the way to the edge of your screen. 
but with uniform on and your circle selected, you can kind of get it placed how you want it. It might not snap perfectly in the center, might need to turn magnetics off. So it doesn't want to snap, so that means I need to turn my other layers off and then try again. It also isn't really wanting to snap because it's so close to the edges. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm getting a gold line. There we go. So I have gold crosshairs in the center. Deselect. Now I can zoom out. So that's sometimes tricky. Um, the snapping tool was wanting to snap to the top and the side instead of the center. And I can zoom in as long as I'm not touching the selected shape itself. So I could only zoom in so far since it's such a big shape. I guess I could have done it down here more and gotten a little closer, but it worked out. So if you want just to have a guide for where your circle needs to be finished, I would turn the opacity way down and then I would two finger swipe to alpha lock that layer so you don't actually draw on it. And then let's go ahead and turn our other layers back on. So the butterfly goes outside of that layer or of that circle. Um, that might look pretty cool. You could, you could still have a nice circle look to this and have the butterfly just be the one thing that extends past that. Or you could start over on the butterfly. Um, which kind of sounds like a good idea. Maybe bump the dragonfly up and the drag butterfly down and smaller. Um, but hopefully yours are all a little bit different than this one. Ooh, I'm taking a long time. It's already 11.35. All right, so the, the rest is really just um, going on new layers. Um, anytime you have something that's gonna overlap, just go to a new layer. So if you, um, if I'm on this leaf layer and I want to do something that's over here, I don't really need to worry about going to a new layer. Unless I am going to bump into that leaf, then I might want a new layer. Oh, I'm on the thicker line too, but I'm now trying to speed up a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about details so much. I'm really not happy with the dragonfly placement, <laughs> but we'll just keep going. Let's see. So again, let's, let's just have just for visual interest here so that, oof, I do not like that at all. Um, just get some more color down on the page so that the next thing I show you will um, be easier to see. All right, and I'm going to go to another layer. So just start filling in your design however you want. I realize I'm not using the studio pen after we went through and changed that setting, but now you know how to do it. You don't have to make it black and white either, of course. I feel like I want something to come out of this dragonfly, but I don't want it to look crazy. Thank you, Jean. I like the butterflies sticking out too. That'll be fun. So um, what I'm thinking right now is just how I want to fill in the rest of the circle just to get more of a circle appearance. And I'm also going to fill in my dragonfly a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and fill that whole thing in. There we go. I like that a little better. Dragonflies are easy to miss if you make them tiny. This is fairly tiny for this design. They're just easy to overlook in the end. So just something to think about. I'm back up on this layer and I'm just going to go ahead and just for time constraints here, <laughs> this is going to look really funny because it looks like it's the dragonfly's antlers. <laughs> 
So, oops, I want that to be bigger. I want it to kind of go all the way up to that circle, almost. I grew up on a lake and dragonflies are, they spend a long time in the water for their larval stage and they do not look like dragonflies. And I think it's where they got their names, but I, I haven't actually confirmed that. Um, they are aliens. They, they look like aliens. Let's just say it. <laughs> I'm glad you're trying to follow along. Thank you. Antenna. Yeah, they do look like antenna, Jean. Um, I don't know. So, uh, we have, we have, you know, it doesn't have to make sense. Just like this leaf doesn't make sense. So it's all good. All right. I'm going to turn off the circle and I'm going to turn off the grid lines. <laughs> all right. So one of the things I wanted to show you with your final design before we run out of time, because I don't have enough followers to have longer than a one hour live. And you probably don't want to sit here for an hour anyways, or longer than an hour. Go ahead and turn your background off and three finger swipe down and copy all. And then group all your layers and just turn them off. And then three finger swipe down and paste. And now you have your design all on one layer. And that's a fun way to just have something to play with. You could duplicate that and alpha lock it and make it white as well. So you have a white one. Of course, you can't see that on the white background. And you have all these options to play with. Ooh, this would look fun if I did some more veining. Some, yeah, so anyways. Um, so you have a black version and a white version. What did I do? Oh, I didn't turn that one on. And, and now I want to have a, a version that has some different shades of gray because it's, I love blend modes. So, um, if you want to do that with your, each layer having a different shade, you can go back and if you have enough layers, you can duplicate your entire group and turn one of them on. Then you have your originals. If you are a, a good artist, um, you will rename your group originals or something like that. I never name much. And then you can um, alpha lock all these things and just find different shades of gray and come through if you're just over here on the edge you can just come through and fill each layer something a little bit different sorry i'm having a hard time talking and doing this at the same time that went in alpha lock so one of the things that's fun with different shades of gray is um, playing with blend modes. Oh, that's not basically black. There we go. Why is my leaf layer kind of black too? I'm just going to go back to a lighter. So I have all these different shades of gray and look what I've got here. I, I had this layer on top of my dragonfly. So the overlap is on top. So that you don't want. So you can go ahead and bring that layer um, underneath. So now if you want, you can go ahead and three finger swipe, copy all and um, turn that off and paste and have that all on one layer, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Actually you do, because then you can change the blend mode all in one fail swoop. All right, so with different shades of gray, you can play with blend modes, but I don't wanna do that till I have some color underneath. So I'm gonna to go to a layer that doesn't have drawing assist on. You can change your background color, or you can just um, go to a fun brush, like in the artistic section. Um, your favorite brushes, your favorite colors. Um, just have fun. 
if you have Brenda Bacher's brushes, oof, I don't like that one. If you have Brenda Bacher's brushes from her watercolor classes on Skillshare, she has a really great watercolor canvas and um, a, a really cool brush. Um, so the mandalas I showed you earlier with the black and white with the earth themes, the, that was her brushes. So have fun just kind of blobbing and playing. I wouldn't do a lot of super light, super dark. I would kind of keep them sort of in the same tone. Uh, and then go to your layer that has all the different shades of gray and play with blend modes. So I'm going to turn this up. So there's color burn. So the texture comes through where all your solid colors were. And the different shades of gray are giving you a different look. Now, if you want to make some um, changes to this gray layer and you don't want them to be symmetrical, you just go to that layer itself and alpha lock it and pick some different shades of gray. And I'm just going to stay on this same brush. So you can, maybe you want this to be darker in the center. Go to a darker shade of gray and start adding color gray to your um, mandala in various areas without symmetry on and get a lot of uh, fluctuation in your colors that way that is less symmetrical. Does that make sense? fluctuation in colors. I don't know if that made sense. If you decide, you know, I don't I really don't like that green, I'm going to go to hue saturation brightness and play around with color on that. So much flexibility. Um, you could also just turn your white one on. You could play around with different blend modes on this white one too, like overlay. Overlay is a really great one for white and uh, black. Uh, only for, not for certain colors like red. So I just sit here and play. There's, um, there is a handbook on the Procreate website. It is procreate.art and then just go to the support tab and you can, oh, you can also play with opacity. So in the support tab, you will find um, the handbook and you can look through that. You can find all the definitions of everything. You can find uh, all the definitions of all these blend modes and exactly what they do and how they interact and try to grasp and wrap your mind around. Uh, you know, how to get a certain look. I tend to have a few of my favorites and I know that I usually use gray tones to use those. And, um, and then I just play and toggle through and swipe through. So that's how I do mandalas. Now I want to know how you pronounce mandala. Mandala? Mandala? <laughs> It's art, it doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> it's true. True, true, true. I tried to <clears throat> I tried to study the blend modes. And there's no way that I'm gonna remember all of that. So I gave up. And in my brush making class, when I go through all of these things too. There's blend modes in here as well, and that just blows my mind. I'm like, okay, there's a blend modes you can apply to a brush hmm. in a couple of sections, not just one. So again, it's just playing and experimenting. Like Brenda says, it's art. And that's part of the fun too. I would probably have more fun with the background. I would definitely, obviously this isn't, a finished product in my opinion but um, but the steps that I use are there and I'm gonna look at my notes and make sure I didn't forget any steps 
using magnetics to rotate. Yep. Ah, uh, yes. So the rainbow. Um, so I showed you black, white, and color burn. This I have everything on separate layers and then the colors within each layer. This is all one layer, so I just kind of have color variations within a layer with alpha lock turned on. But my favorite is a rainbowy one. I think it's within this one. And then you can see here, hopefully you can see, I have three different color versions of the background color. So my original post was with this one. This is my gray scale color burn layer, but I also have a fun rainbowy one and a much more bold one. And then another thing that's really fun to do, if you can see, this is, <clears throat> it's basically what we did um, where I have a fun texture layer in the background it didn't have a lot of color variety, but it has some texture and then the white on top. I think this looks like a bandana <laughs> or a handkerchief. All right. Have a good day.